Good morning, everybody. My name's Jeff. Can everybody hear me okay in the back? Should I talk like that? Okay. This one, this one closer? Yeah. All right. Gotcha. Okay. Um, like I said, my name's Jeff. Uh, we're going to be talking about Gutenberg blocks, kind of what's underneath, behind the scenes, uh, stuff that you don't usually see when you're dragging and dropping blocks and playing with Gutenberg. Um, I work at Automatic, so I've uh, been there for about eight years, and I work on um, Calypso, which is the front end of WordPress.com, so I'm working in React most of the time with connections to the back end. And so, um, you know, it's, I've been learning Gutenberg just like the rest of you, so I thought I'd share some things that I've learned. And uh, feel free to stop me if you have questions, especially when we get to the code stuff. If there's anything you don't recognize, just let me know. So uh, by now, you've all seen the block editor. You know, you come in to the, the WordPress editor, and you can put in a Twitter block. You can put in any sort of block. And um, you know, it's what you see is what you get. You drag it around. And it's a nice little package. It's a block. It's, something, it's a piece of content. And um, you know, we're all pretty familiar with that by now. It's, it's only been there for, I don't know, a year. How, how long has Gutenberg been out? Not very long. But we're all pretty familiar with it by now. And I'm sure we've all seen this thing pop up a bunch. Welcome to the wonderful world of blocks. And um, there's the promise of Gutenberg bringing um, full site customization. Um, uh, the next round of the focus for WordPress is to bring all of these blocks together for uh, basically revamping the customizer. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what's behind the scenes today. Um, so if you look at the, um, the Gutenberg repository, there's a quote that's been there for a while that says, Gutenberg is more than an editor. Um, while it's currently focused on building that block editor, um, it doesn't end there. So there's groundwork for a new model for WordPress core that will ultimately impact the entire publishing experience of the platform. I don't usually like to read quotes in a talk, but I feel like this is pretty important. Um, so Gutenberg, it's, it's more than just this block editor. It's a modern web framework for WordPress, and it's something that you can use um, in your sites and things that are beyond websites. Um, I invite you to install the Gutenberg plugin if you haven't. I know Gutenberg is installed with WordPress core as is, but install the plugin, you'll get the latest and greatest. And there's this cool demo if you haven't seen it. Um, so if you install the plugin, you've got in the sidebar menu, Gutenberg demo. And um, you can just play with some of the stuff that you've seen kind of at the keynotes. Um, you can move stuff around, see what the images do. Um, it gives you kind of a good overview of what's there. Um, and if you think about it, there's, there's a lot going on with this screen right here. There's a lot that's behind the scenes for making this possible. And um, it's kind of cool that instead of keeping it all in Gutenberg and, and um, not opening it up to, to all of you and, all, uh, and everybody else in the world, um, these things are being published as packages. And you can use them um, uh, as you see fit. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, What's this talk about? What are Gutenberg packages? What are some packages? What do they do? How can you use them in your own project? Um, what are some of the other tools that came with Gutenberg that are now in WordPress core? And then how can you contribute to pack package development? How can you take something that you've learned or something that you see that maybe doesn't suit your needs or you think would be um, other people would find useful? How can you give that back? Um, what's it not about? It's not about how to create a Gutenberg block. Um, it's not about how to uh, build a site composed of blocks. Um, it's not about the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. If you want to learn about how to create a block, um, Julian uh, had a pretty good uh, uh, workshop yesterday, so I invite you to watch that video if you didn't see it. Um, it's not taped. Workshops aren't taped. Well, see you the next time there's a workshop on how to build a block, or go out and, and check out the handbook um, for building a block. But um, this is kind of about how to to do things outside the box uh, in your own project if you have an existing um, site or something that you want to use some of this in that's uh, newly in WordPress. So what's in the box now because of Gutenberg? Um, there are third-party uh, libraries like React and Lodash that weren't here. I gave a talk at, at WordCamp Asheville two years ago, and I talked about how to you know, sneak React into your WordPress project. And we don't have to do that anymore. It's in WordPress. You can just use it. Um, Lodash, similarly, um, there, there is something called underscore that is in WordPress already, uh, but now you can use Lodash. It's the newer version. Um, and there's packages, which is what we're really going to talk about. These WordPress packages or Gutenberg packages. Um, how are they built? How can you use them? So what are Gutenberg packages? Uh, it's modular code. It's reusable. It's, it's a package, just like any other package system. Um, you can take it and use it. 
Um, the source is in the Gutenberg code base under the packages directory. Um, you might have heard the term mono repo. Uh, and they've kind of taken this approach with Gutenberg to kind of have everything that they might use um, in this vein, in this sort of framework, and have it in the Gutenberg repository, and then package those up, and then they can use them in other, other places like WordPress core or like your own, um, your own software. Um, they're managed by a tool called Lerna. And Lerna can get pretty complex, but it's just a way of taking these things and spitting them out in a format that can go into NPM or other sort of package management um, systems. And um, when there's a Gutenberg release, uh, everything gets built, and then they get pushed to NPM. If you're uh, familiar with JavaScript development at all, I'm sure you've used NPM to install a package, and that's where these live. Um, then WordPress then includes these built um, copies of these packages uh, inside the WP includes JS disk directory. And um, you can use them. So what sort of packages are there? Uh, there's all sorts of packages. There's data fetching, state management, presentation, view layer, ports of backend um, PHP stuff that you'd expect um, in 2019 to be in the front end. They're there too. Um, there's a lot of dev tools and et cetera, et cetera. If you look at NPM under the WordPress um, uh, organization, there's oodles and oodles of packages there for the using. And indeed, if you look at the um, source of WordPress, this is the package JSON, um, which we'll talk a little bit about um, in a little bit. Um, you can see that all of those packages at WordPress, blah, 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 they're all being imported into WordPress itself. So uh, the source lives in Gutenberg, and WordPress imports them. And you can do the same thing. Um, here's the block editor handbook for one of these packages. Um, it's called Element, and it's um, interesting um, to note that Element's kind of a, an abstraction layer on top of a React element. Um, and you can read all about it there. I just kind of wanted to show um, the handbook and what a package looks like there. Um, uh, there are reasons, if you read um, the page, why they chose to create an abstraction layer on top of, of React. Um, but for the purposes of this talk, you don't really need to know that. Um, the block library itself is an NPM. You can install the block library and then register the core blocks uh, in a basically an on-wordpress context. And um, there are software out there um, that have used the Gutenberg editor um, that are not WordPress. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, how can you get started using WordPress packages? Um, first, I suggest that you install WordPress locally, and it's, um, you know, it's kind of a matter of choice how you like to do that. Um, a lot of people like local um, by Flywheel. Um, I actually use the Jetpack Docker um, environment. It's pretty handy for, for my day-to-day. -day. Um, VVV is short for um, varying vagrant vagrants, I think, and a lot of people use that. Um, Gutenberg itself has a, um, has a Docker environment that you can spin up. Um, you don't have to have anything installed on your system except for Docker. And if you follow the instructions here, it can help you get a local environment. But like I said, it's really kind of um, what you like to do, what the kind of projects that you like to work on uh, as to what your local environment might be. It might be um, you actually install WordPress itself, and that's you can do that if you want to. Um, something else that you're going to need is Node. Um, Anybody not familiar with Node, it's, um, it's a, a way to run JavaScript locally and run scripts and uh, do all sorts of stuff. So it's kind of a Swiss Army knife, and uh, it's kind of one of the first things I do when I set up a new computer is get my Node environment. Um, I use a piece of software called NVM to manage that because different things that I contribute to require different versions of Node. Um, and again, it, that's something that people have different, um, different opinions and different... Um, different uh, pieces of software to manage their node versions. Um, and then you can just use NPM. Uh, NPM is a piece of software that comes with node typically that lets you install packages. NPM used to be short for node package manager and you can think about it that way. Um, so like I said, these scripts or, the, or these packages are in NPM, you can just install them. NPM install uh, at WordPress scripts um, is kind of the basis of, of the demos I'm going to be showing in a little bit, um, that installs a, um, a, uh, 
a tool to help you run um, these tasks um, to build your files and that sort of thing, and it's pretty useful. Um, ESLint plugin is another one that I wanted to call out because it, um, it helps you to, um, to do things WordPress style way a lot easier. Um, if you have an ESLint um, plugin in your um, editor, it can show you where things are not to the WordPress coding standards, and you can even use tools to automatically make them to WordPress coding standards. It just saves a lot of time. I'll show that off in a little bit. And npm install WordP at WordPress dot dot dot, all of those packages, that's pretty much how you, you install them. Is there any questions about anything so far? Cool. Um, this goes to the scripts that I was talking about, at WordPress scripts. Um, if you go to, might not be able to see that, let's see if we can zoom in. DeveloperWordPress.org, block editor, packages, package scripts, setup, um, or you can just Google for um, WordPress um, block editor handbook scripts or at WordPress slash scripts. Um, this shows you how to use um, some helpers to help you do things like build and, and do some linting. The main one that we want to talk about is build and start uh, there. So I would suggest you at least have those two. Um, because after you have that in place in your package.json file, you can just run npm run start, and it's pretty handy. Um, it will keep rebuilding your files. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to show off some code on how you can actually do this sort of thing. Um, please feel free to stop me if anything doesn't look familiar, if you don't understand the syntax, um, that sort of thing. If you want to follow along, um, you can go to the GitHub repo jblz slash wcavl 2019. And here's the repo that I just pulled the link to. Um, First file we're going to look at is just your basic entry point for your plugin. Um, this can look like any plugin in WordPress. This just had to be something in place for me to do a demo. Um, and what I'm doing here is for these demos, I'm just looking for a particular post ID and then uh, for the repo, it was github.com slash jblz um, w or slash wcavl2019. Yes, thank you. Cool, and there's the repo. <laughs> cool, so what I'm gonna do for the first demo is I'm gonna look for this particular post ID and run this demo one, and if you look at demo one, I'm enqueuing some styles and scripts and running this function here for registering a bunch of these, um, these packages, scripts that um, exist in the WP includes, JS disk directory, like I mentioned before. And this is all in the repo, so don't feel like you need to copy any of it, any of it down. Um, and then I'm just enqueuing um, a JavaScript file, just like you would probably be used to. Is anybody not familiar with WP and Q script and WP and Q style? Um, those are, if, if you are, um, it's just a way to take uh, a script or a style, which is, which is just a file, and then send them to the browser at an appropriate time rather than just taking your JavaScript and writing it directly into PHP. So this is a way to get a JavaScript file or a CSS file into the browser. Um, and uh, it's noteworthy to, to mention that this is not a um, built JavaScript file. It's just plain. I'll show it in a minute. Um, and it has some dependencies. And if you look at the dependencies for it, um, we're including something called WP Polyfill. Um, that is one of the packages that's available to you that, um, that lets you have broader browser support. Um, it's not kind of a silver bullet, but if someone is coming in with an old version of Internet Explorer or something like that, it'll probably still work if you have this or another polyfill to um, bring it up to modern JavaScript standards. Um, there's a package called Nux, which stands for New User Experience. Um, it's a way to focus attention and show guided tours and that sort of thing. Um, there's AutoP, um, which is a port from the PHP side of WordPress, 
um, that takes, whenever it sees a block of text and has um, a new line in it, it will add um, paragraph tags around it. Um, date, there's a date script, which is another port from PHP. Um, element is the element I showed you before, um, which is the abstraction on top of React. I18N is short for internationalization. Um, it's a way to localize your UI for various audiences. Word count is self-explanatory. And escape HTML is a way to prevent troublesome characters from getting into your browser and causing trouble with cross-site scripting and that sort of thing. Um, so now we can take a look at um, the JavaScript file that is loading. And before I show off the demo, let's take a look at that somewhere. Let's look at it in an editor that's a little nicer. All right, so this is just straight JavaScript. It's not compiled, and um, it's wrapped in a function um, that wraps around this global WP object. And you're probably familiar if you've done any um, front-end JavaScript with WordPress. This um, global WP object houses most things that are WordPress specific that you can use. And then up at the top, I'm destructuring out these scripts so we can just use them locally. Um, and those kind of relate one to one with the packages that I showed you before, auto P, date, element, escape HTML. And I'll show, show you how we're gonna use them. Um, got a block of text that's maybe from an API. And I'm looking for an element at a particular place and doing some stuff, I'm doing a word count on it, adding an event listener, wrapping in internationalization functions, and the rest I'll come back to after I do the demo. First off, the plugin is not activated, so you can see it's just an empty page if we go and look at the editor for it. Um, there's nothing special going on, it's just a regular page type post. Um, there's nothing in the content, there's just a title. And as you see, there's nothing there. But if I activate the plugin, that JavaScript file is going to kick in. It's going to look for that element there. It's going to take that block of text, um, wrapping it in WP Auto P to get the paragraph tags. You can see it adds paragraphs around where there were spaces here. And that is the, the Nux um, tour, uh, I can't remember what you call this particular widget, but it attaches this sort of element to um, another element on the page. And I added a little, um, little delay so you can watch. It's not there until you scroll down. Oh, there it is. And it's styled pretty horribly, but at least it's styled, right? <laughs> um, new user experience. So it, the welcome to the wonderful world of blocks pop-up thing that I showed you at the beginning is, I think it's part of that. Uh, and the button handler works, and it's doing a date format. And if we look back at the code, Yeah, there, there are properties for that. It's not implemented here, um, but you can, um, you can keep track of the state of that. Um, yeah, th that's really annoying, but it will come back because I haven't implemented that part. Um, yep. <laughs> and um, so a couple things um, to kind of point out is this is how you call the auto P. It's a little weird because you import it as auto P, and then you have to call auto P, auto P. Um, and then it's same, kind of the same thing with escape HTML, escape HTML, that's kind of a gotcha there, that's lowercase and that's uppercase, and they all have different um, functions in them that you can use. Um, but the escape HTML is making sure that sneaky scripts don't get into your stuff from uh, an API or something like that. Um, this is your internationalization um, localization function to wrap a string for translation. Um, so 
if we had, um, if we were trying to target multiple markets or something like that, multiple locales, um, we could have translations for Engage that were local to wherever we are um, on the back end and we could load those and it would show and all of that stuff. Um, let's see, is there anything else? Nope, I think that's pretty much it for demo one. Oh, the word count. Um, so you can see it's counting it and then just saying, um, appending to the string, it has that number of words. And if we look back at the page, move this out of the way, there are 215 words in that ridiculous um, Star Trek Ipsum that I found on the web. <coughs> cool, so that is kind of an example of something that I would probably only do kind of as a last resort if you have an existing um, script that you don't really want to convert to like a, a built JavaScript file. If you don't have a built environment, if you have other constraints, um, you're loading from um, a CDN that you can't affect, you can then go in and, and do this sort of thing without having this big build environment. Um, but the um, kind of the beauty of that at WordPress scripts, um, thing that I showed you before with the build and the start, is it gets you a lot of stuff for free that otherwise would have taken a lot of setup. Um, a Webpack environment, a Webpack is a way to build your JavaScript. Um, it gets, um, um, everything this WP scripts binary can do for you. Um, so that's kind of cool, I'll show you that. And in your terminal, you can just run, yes, thank you. Is that better? <laughs> uh, you can just run npm run start and you see it's going out, it's looking for um, it's looking for some configurations. I'm using the default Webpack configuration. I've not customized anything. It's just uh, what's built into WP scripts. Um, and it's looking for files in a particular place. Um, so as long as you put the files in the particular place for your JavaScript entry, um, it kind of does everything else for you. And you can go in and, let's see, I'll page down a little bit so you can see. I'll go in and edit demo two which is just the hello world for um, using, um, using this from a build script. So instead of one exclamation point, we'll do three. And if you look back here, it's gonna pick up automatically that I've edited that file and build your whole app again, just the parts that need to be built. You see it only built that source demo to index. Um, it's pretty smart about knowing um, if something has a dependency on another module, it needs to rebuild that. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, so it helps with that feedback loop. Uh, it kind of makes it more like you're just um, loading a JavaScript file and you're just editing that. Uh, so you don't have to go out and run the compile script again. Um, so the entry for our built demos is in, let's see, how am I on time? Okay. Is in index.js. Um, just inside source, and um, it's nice to separate out your dependencies like this. So if you look at the WordPress source and the Gutenberg source, um, you're gonna have things like external dependencies which are not part of WordPress proper. Um, they're things that we've imported. Um, internal dependencies, these are particular to the demo um, that I'm giving today, and if you look other places, let's look at demo four. Uh, you'll have WordPress dependencies, which these are the packages. Um, these are things that you're importing from NPM um, or scraping off the WP Global or that sort of thing. So it's nice to have those in place um, so you can kind of see what's going on. Um, let's just talk about demo two for now. Um, I'm just importing it from a directory that's relative to the current one. And this is just a little bit of an illustration to show that, um, you know, your app can be dynamic and you can switch based on a number of things. And I'm passing um, demo two from the PHP script for the built demo, just letting it know this is demo number two for this particular page. And if you look back here, if it's demo number two, it's gonna re render demo two. Um, if you're not familiar with this syntax here, 
Um, this is called JSX. It is um, a way to make writing um, JavaScript components and particularly React components a lot more like writing HTML. It helps with composition. Um, you can do things like adding um, foo equals bar and that'll automatically get sent to this component as a prop or a property. So it will know that whatever wants to display a demo to also wants foos to be bar, if that makes any sense. It probably doesn't. Um, while I'm live editing sh to show you something cool, um, I added a, a new line, added some spaces, and um, you're probably familiar with WordPress coding standards that that wouldn't fly. So when I hit save, watch what it does. Puts it right back. And this is part of the ESLint um, package that I showed before. I've also got um, a piece of software in my editor called Prettier, which takes um, those ESLint standards and then applies them on save, and that's all customizable per your editor. So I invite you to look at ESLint. It makes that sort of thing so much easier. You can just paste stuff in, do all sorts of stuff. Um, I can even do like, oh, I forgot that this doesn't need to have a demo to closing, and it will get rid of that and just make it a self-closing element. And as you can see, it looks a lot like HTML, and it's meant to. Um, and all the time I'm doing this, it's rebuilding my app in the background. So let's look at the demo two on the front end, just for the hello world. And this was it with the, um, <coughs> the plugin disabled, and when I reload, it's just going to say hello world because that's all that we've told it to do here. Um, this is a React component. It's a functional component that takes no properties and just spits out a div that says hello world. That's pretty simple. Um, so if anybody doesn't understand this syntax, um, this is just a function, short function syntax that takes, this one takes no arguments, but if it took arguments, we could put arguments in either um, arguments, or we could destructure them with arg1, arg2. But this one doesn't use them, so there's no sense. And in the background, you can see it's been building all of this stuff. And if you take a look at what actually gets sent, it's built JavaScript. I won't show that. <laughs> Let's take a look at demo three. There's only one more after this, so <laughs> have a couple minutes for questions. Um, same thing. Um, demo three is just switching on a particular page number, post uh, post ID for a page. Um, minimal dependencies. Lodash, like I mentioned before, it's it's a functional programming. Um, kind of helper utility library that's another Swiss Army knife. It's really good. If I invite you to take a look at the docs for Lodash. It's really useful on the front end. Um, Git is a way to get deep properties of an object without worrying about um, errors. If you've ever tried to do like um, x.y.z and you get a weird error, this helps you get around that and you can specify a default um, value. Um, so in this demo, we're going to do some fetching. So we're um, importing the API fetch um, package. And um, you've already seen the escape HTML. You've already seen the um, internationalization functions. I've got a post ID that I'm going to try to fetch. And here's the fetcher function to do it. And all I'm doing is calling the REST API um, for pages and this post ID. And after the REST ID, or REST API comes back, then I take the post, do some massaging of it, and um, use the get function from Lodash to get deep into that post object that comes back from the REST API and get what I really want is this title rendered for title, and link for link, and um, content rendered for content. If you look at the shape of the REST API, that's how it comes back. Um, and then I'm taking uh, and looking for um, looking for particular elements and then just plopping the results in. And this is not the best way to do it, and that's what Demo 4 is for, to show you the best way to do it, or the better way to do it. Um, and there's a button, 
And when I click it, it's going to fetch the thing, and it's going to put the stuff in these. Is any of that unclear? I kind of went pretty quickly through it. Um, sure. Uh, right here, yeah, yep. Um, so, so they didn't do it, but I mean, so like, like for example, in Ridley, when you get the um, upset grid reference, there was an A that was there. Oh, there was an A behind it, four slash A. Why didn't you do the same thing? Why didn't you do the call the circle? Forward slash A. Okay, yeah. right here. Why, um, why isn't that a great use? This is just a string. Um, if y it's probably hard to see on there, but <coughs> this is a um, a newer kind of string in JavaScript that uses a back oh. back tick instead yeah. of a, a single quote. <laughs> okay. I don't understand. It's abbreviating, but then it doesn't abbreviate. Doesn't that isn't that a little bit oxymoron? Yeah. So if you take a look at this self closing syntax, um, yeah. if we take out that slash and we can put um, stuff in here yeah. and then close h3 it'll keep it um, but that's just it's a, a shorter way and there's less code to store uh, if there's no stuff in there it'll get rid of it and just do the self-closing syntax it didn't, it didn't yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's valid HTML by the way to have an h3 that's self-closing um, no. I think it'll probably work but it's not really valid um, anyhow on to the demo let's see if this works Clicking and it's getting this post over here, there. It's a regular post. It's getting the title and the um, the content over the REST API and just plopping plopping it into this div um, that's there. And if we go over here and change change the there's copy in this nebula to our Tuvix. <laughs> and we reload this. Actually, we didn't even need to reload. We could just click it again. It's going to go out and get the new title and um, the link that's there and the same content. And um, that's all happening over the REST API. So any questions about that? There's really no data flow or anything there. The package part of it is the API fetch and internationalization around the button, and escaping the HTML, and escaping this attribute and link. Um, again, this is not really how you do it. I just wanted to show off some of those functions. All right, one more demo, and it's kind of the same, um, same sort of thing. It's going to reach out to the, if I can tie it, it's going to reach out to the REST API and get a post, and uh, instead of just kind of taking the response and plopping it in, um, we're going to do some things the data flow way. Um, if you're familiar with Redux package, um, it's a way to um, take something um, as far as data flow and break it down into uh, discrete actions that have a particular action type, and then sometimes data attached to those actions. And typically those actions are just a regular JavaScript object. Um, if you've heard of um, a programming model called event sourcing, um, it's kind of the same thing. So you send an event, which is an action. Um, something is listening to that action to when it comes in and, and saying, am I interested in this action? Yes, okay, well then I need to update my data that I know about from the data that you sent me. Um, and I'll show you that part in a minute. Um, but um, this is kind of the meat of that. And what it's really doing is loading the store file. And if anybody doesn't know about what I just did, I just did it reflexively. Um, uh, in Visual Studio Code and a couple other editors, you can hold down the command button. Oops. And hover over things like the packages, variables, and go to them. So I just held down um, command and clicked on store. 
and helps me get to this other file that I'm talking about really quick, quickly without having to find it. Um, so this one, the only dependency we're using is get from Lodash. Uh, and then WordPress dependencies, um, we're combining reducers and registering store. Um, this is a data store, and WordPress is kind of opinionated on how um, it's doing this. Um, it, it's, it goes into detail in the handbook that it's not just Redux. There are some um, decisions that they've made for uh, WordPress itself um, for um, how to make it appropriate and how to make it um, less likely to break, um, and a little bit better of a developer experience than just raw Redux. Um, so these are the actions I was talking about. Um, there's one called fetch post, which tells the store that I'm fetching a post. Um, it tells it what the post ID is, and so it can store that. Um, and if the post comes back as an error, I can tell it, oh, that was an error, so that um, the store knows that I got an error. Um, and if we get data back that is valid, then I can say that I received it and send that post data through to the store. Um, These are reducer functions, and you can think about a reducer function as something that takes an initial state whenever your application loads. Um, so for this one, the error, um, whenever your application loads, that error is going to be null. It's not going to have any value. It's going to be null. <coughs> and whenever one of those actions comes in, um, it doesn't matter what kind of action it is. If it sees any action, it's going to process this function. So it's saying, okay, what type of action is it? If it's one of these three, then it's interested in that action. It's going to take some sort of action. Otherwise, it's just going to return the original state. Um, and so I'm showing here how you can have kind of uh, discrete nodes of, of data for your state and reducers. So there's the error. There's the fetching state, whether or not you're fetching um, from the API, and what the data actually are whenever you get them back. And whenever we register the store, we can combine the reducers into one. So we're going to be um, able to say, OK, error is that result from the error reducer. Fetching is the result from the fetching re reducer, likewise. And then there's um, a concept called selectors, which is a way to reach into that state, um, get that particular piece of state um, as a function. And I'll show you how to use that on the React side, on the element side. Um, so this is just getting the error, that's getting the fetching state, and that's getting the post data. And you could get as particular as you wanted in here. You could say, oh, I just want the ID. You could add a selector just for that here. Um, it's kind of a lot to go through for a demo. Um, but let's look at the code. And there are these helper functions in this package called WordPress data. Um, that's one of the um, meatiest parts of, of Gutenberg. If you look at the source, there's a lot going on here with, um, with function composition, with um, uh, using these sorts of data flow pieces. Um, so it's a lot to learn. Oh, there's a function compose too. So when we return our um, React component, because that's what we're um, returning here is a demo for React component. We are composing with select and with dispatch and then calling all of those on this React component. And what with select does is it takes, it's a function that takes select and then returns the, the value of those selectors in this object um, as properties for the wrapped object. And it's kind of a lot to wrap your head around. There's something called a higher order component which um, is composed of lower order components. Um, and I'll show you how that works in a second. But basically, the content's going to be in your properties, title, length, the error state, and the isFetching state are going to be in your properties. And with dispatch is how you piece into the actions. So um, we're calling fetch post. It's going to dispatch that fetch post action. And then when we receive data, we're going to um, dispatch the receive post, and if we get an error, we're going to dispatch receive post error. And this is the actual React component that is wrapped with all of those things. And there's a button, and when it is clicked, it's going to do this fetch jambalayas. And guess what I'm going to return? 
um, which does those things, and that gets pieced to the properties of this React component. And if there's an error, it's going to tell you there's an error. If there's not, then it's going to tell you if it's fetching or not. And um, if there's a title, it's going to print out the title. If there's content, it's going to dangerously set the inner HTML for the content. Um, so this is kind of important. You have to be able to trust where you're getting your data if you're going to just plop things into React. Otherwise, um, sanitize them, run them through escape. Um, but if we ran this through escape, it wouldn't work. I'll, I'll show you why. <laughs> So that's demo three. Demo four, did you see it for a second? Fetching, fetching. And when it comes back, it gets that result. And we got jambalayas. Um, let's change it so it gets an error. So it's rebuilding in the background. I can just go ahead and reload. That should not have worked. Is it still building? No, no, live demo. Do, 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 post ID. Maybe I did it too quickly, or maybe it's cached. Hey. I will stop this and start it again, see if that works. Yep. So it got an error back, and it's just um, JSON stringifying the error that we got back. You could probably do something a little bit more elegant than that in your actual app. Um, let's see if it will live rebuild again. Cool. All right. So anybody have any questions about this? And I don't believe you if you say no, because <laughs> <laughs> I do. I have questions. <laughs> um, you don't have to get as deep into um, selectors and dispatchers, um, but it's, I think it's a concept that you're going to see a lot more going forward. I think that the developer experience is probably going to get better around it. Um, there are already some helpers that kind of help you do some of the stuff without piecing it together in your components, um, but they use generator functions, and I didn't want to bother with those. Um, cool. Back to demo three, I wanted to show off that you could do other things other than just images, of course. You can do demo videos. This is just a um, embedded YouTube and in, in a Gutenberg block. And someone put this song over the discovery. <laughs> Um, I think that's pretty much it for the demo. Does anybody have any code questions before I talk about contributing? Cool. So all of this is still pretty new. I gave a talk, like I said, two years ago, and none of this was in WordPress, but now it is. Um, and it's still getting better, um, and you can help make it better. So. If you see something that doesn't work quite right, or if that um, developer experience doesn't work for you, you think you can make it better, please help make it better. Um, this is a, it's a very active project. You can see it's um, a lot of JavaScript. There's 3% PHP in Gutenberg. Um, so it's fresh and new. It's exciting. Um, this is the past month. There have been 226 merge pull requests. And if you take a look at the activity graph, um, I think that is probably the lead up to the merge into core. <laughs> so um, if you see something, say something. There's, if you go to WordPress slash Gutenberg on GitHub, you can go to new issue. Um, and there's these helpful templates to help you file a bug report or help request or feature request. 
um, please do. And that's it. Any questions? If not, I'll be at the happiness bar.